My name is Christian. I'm going to be building a timber frame structure that's going to serve as a proof of concept for a house I'm planning on building in a few years. We're going to start with this, to this, to this, to this. Let's get started. So here you can see some of the vestiges of the first chips I made. These are all chips that have been sitting here for, I guess, a little bit over a year now. Uh, they served as kind of a nice mulch for this path. Uh, we'll decompose more over time, but this is, at the time, we didn't really have a good way to move these logs, so the first thing I thought of is, well, I'll hew them, which will allow them to dry faster. Just a very rough hewing. Um, let them dry faster and make them lighter so that we can actually transport them up to where I want to work on them to put in the joinery and then eventually to the site where we're building the structure. Um, this is not the right way to heal. I've gotten a lot of comments on the previous video, um, but it's the way I wanted to heal. Uh, this wood is remarkably soft. Um, if I was working in anything harder or on um, any more pieces, I would have done a more traditional technique. Um, but for the simple act of doing a rough cleanup on those pieces, it worked well enough. Would I do it again that way? Probably not. Um, I've been collecting some better tools over time, but as a first crude effort, it was actually a lot of fun. Um, so what I, I ended up doing, I don't know where the other piece is, but instead of queuing it and then moving it directly to the work site, I knew I wasn't going to have time for a while, so I set it up on some of the stumps we had taken down and just let it sit about a foot or so above the, above the ground. So it had six months to a year to dry before I even tried to move it. Um, the 26 foot 6x8 is not light, especially when it's still wet. Um, so it sat here for a while, and I had to figure out how to get it up. It's actually across and up a hill and all this other stuff. So the next thing I want to show you is how do you actually move some of these pieces? Um, I'm by no means the strongest person in the world. Um, I've been, been getting in better shape by doing this stuff, but some of these pieces are pretty darn heavy. Um, and a lot of them I've actually moved by hand, funnily enough. Um, so we'll go take a look at the log arch that I used, that I built and used to move most of the trees out from this area up to the work site and to the sawmill. Um, up here, we have some of the logs that are destined for the sawmill. I'm not doing much uh, hand hewing uh, for the end of this just because my time is limited. And uh, for me, the fun part's the joinery. It was good to do a few pieces by hand, a few pieces even by hand, but I quite like my sawmill for the rest of the stuff. Um, so a lot like this, believe it or not, is actually not that hard to move on your own when you have the right tools. Um, what we ended up doing is using this log arch. Now this configuration is something I came up with myself. I'm not a structural engineer. Consult designs and take whatever risks you want. But there are plenty of designs out there like this. I guess I'm just saying this may not be your best blueprint. Something like this, fantastic idea. I, built, I ended up building this with a welder, an angle grinder, and about 100 bucks worth of parts from the local hardware store and a couple of the other related stores. Um, what I have is a chain that goes around the log that's just clipped on. And the way this works is I want to get it up on wheels. And for this one, I can just lift up, but for any of these larger ones, trying to lift and move this, it puts a lot of strain on the back and all of that. Um, so actually getting it up onto the wheels and off the ground so it doesn't drag, that's, that's the other thing. Um, so what this is, is it's a force multiplier. By moving this from about six or seven feet down to two or three feet, we're applying our force over that distance, but we're only moving the log two to three inches. Um, so for every foot this moves vertically, this moves about an inch. So that's that's a pretty hefty force multiplier, and you can configure this a little bit. Uh, for larger logs, um, this design especially doesn't work super well, but again, this sort of lever arm is how I moved most of these pieces, and you'll see me using it in some of the future videos even with the finished lumber, moving it to the project site and getting this put together. 
So all you do is pull down, and there we go. So you use two fingers to hold this here. You can balance it depending on what you want to do, and you can just grab it and pull it, or you could put a bungee cord on here, which is what we've done a few times, especially with the longer ones, bungee cord around here. And come back here and have one or two people pushing on the back, like coming up this steep driveway here. Uh, but it works pretty well. You can also hook this behind a lawn tractor or a car, whatever you want to do. Um, but all the lumber you see as part of this project, at least the frame of the structure, was moved using this technique. Um, that and some of the larger pieces that would have broken the log arch I just dragged behind my car, which is not really recommended, but if it works, it works, and that's, that's what it is. So investing in one of these, even if it's a few hundred bucks, definitely worth it. This is the tool that I could not have built the rest of the structure without. There's different types of chisels, different types of sawmills, and and you can you can buy lumber, but even if you buy lumber, moving it around on your job site, unless you're several times stronger than I am, which you might be, um, moving stuff around like this is just so much easier. It takes a sec to hook it hook it on and unhook it, but it's it's definitely worth it. Um, so. Once you have it moved up to where you want it, the next piece is to let it dry for a little bit. I one of the mistakes I made in this project was I didn't get the bark off fast enough, some of the pieces. So I've got to recut some of the pieces that um, got a little bit damaged because of that. But once you get it roughly to the pro to where you're going to be working on it, you either need, need to hew it or you need to put it on the sawmill. So I'm going to do a quick overview of the sawmill next. Okay. So this sawmill, I've got a much more in-depth video with poor audio quality in the, also on the channel, which I'll link to somewhere down here, maybe if I actually get that corner of the screen correct. Um, and I've made some modifications since then. And I'll be doing a full detailed video on how I use the sawmill, how I do logs that are longer than the 15 or so feet that this can cut. And uh, probably show cutting a long piece like a raptor, maybe in a time lapse or I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, this is a pretty standard blade. Um, they're about 10, 15 bucks each. They don't last super long, but you can sharpen them and they work reasonably well. For those of you who haven't seen the previous video, this is a Harbor Freight Lawn Tractor motor. Um, these are old Mudders motorcycle wheels. These are hand ground, or I guess hand ground down axles because I bought the wrong size. Um, I had to replace the bearings. Uh, this whole frame was, I just welded together uh, at a neighbor's house a while back. Um, the tensioning is manual. <laughs> Not as manual as it used to be, but um, definitely not ideal, but it works. It's just a, some triple punch on here. Um, and what you can't see back here is it's running to a uh, piece off of what I think is an industrial washing machine that I got off eBay, which is hooked to the uh, brake rotor on this wheel. As janky as this is, it's actually worked, it served me pretty well, um, as you can see by some of the stuff in the foreground here. You can actually cut some pretty consistent gear on it. Um, so the things, just the, basically the clutch notes are, the saw head I'm actually pretty happy with. There is a little bit of teetering back and forth, but that, that's easy enough to account for. The bigger thing that I've, that I've made some mistakes on is the bed. So the bed of this sawmill is just barely on some cinder blocks that have shifted. So this has been sitting here for about half a year or so. Um, the heaving, and I put some really big logs in here that I should not have, but actually bent rails. So what I'm trying to say is flatten your bed and get it stable. Um, this one doesn't have any provisions for flattening out the back and making sure it's consistent. So I've had to work around some of the backs in a little bit of cut because I've made some mistakes. But overall, it served me pretty well. So once the logs come off the sawmill, they can be a little bit scraggly, um, and the fuzz on there is a good place for mold to grow and moisture to sit. Um, so one of the things you want to do sooner than I did, this is another one of the mistakes I made, is you want to clean that off as soon as possible. Um, so I started off using a hand plane, um, and in some cases a lunchbox planer. Um, a lot of these pieces back here, the rafters, were done by hand, because uh, I couldn't put them through the lunchbox planer. And 
when I started getting onto some more of these larger pieces, these especially, um, I wanted to try something a little bit more modern, a little bit more mechanical. Um, so I picked up a 7-inch uh, mechanized hand planer, which has worked pretty well so far. Um, I definitely prefer using the hand plane, um, but just for the sheer speed of getting the project done and the fact that I don't have as many nice planes as I would like that are really suited to this, I ended up just going with um, the mechanical planer for now. <clears throat> I've also got some other projects which it would be nice to have that on. Um, but I, I kind of go back and forth on that. But that's the small shavings versus this. These pieces here, the ones that were, these are the ones that are from the previous video. draw knife, because the hand hewing left some pretty nappy gouges uh, on there, because I'm still, still learning. Um, they're definitely usable, but they're, they've got carrot in them, by the way. Um, and so I took the draw knife, took off a lot of the loose bits, flattened them out, got them pretty close to dimension, and then I went at it, went, went at it with a scrub plane. Just to clean up a lot of the extra fuzz, get it as consistent as I could. Um, yeah, so that took a lot of time going from what was in the woods, bringing it up to an area that I could work on it a little bit easier, running through the sawmill, getting all the pieces stacked, dried over the course of a few months. This wood is still a lot wetter than it probably should be, but the structure is, in the end of the day, is going to be a shed, and the way the joinery is set we'll just have to tighten it um, a little bit uh, over the first year or two. But that's why we, I'm doing this proof of concept. Uh, this is where I'm making mistakes, learning uh, what I need to do differently and building uh, the knowledge and the confidence in these tools and in my ability to use them. Um, so the upcoming videos will show first how to make the shorter rafters. Thank you.